Hi, I'm Ginger Polly, the Vintage Girl. Join me and my friends as we explore Vintage America. People are nostalgic for a time when simplicity blended with class. Wow! Remember when things were made in America and built to last a lifetime? On Vintage America, I'll show you how things used to be done and we'll experience how people are using that same knowledge in today's world. Some are even making a living at it. Crazy characters, amazing locations and events, rare collectibles, and good old-fashioned know-how. That's Vintage America. We're in downtown Los Angeles at the Oviatt Building, built in 1928. Today, this is the fabulous Cicada Club. This building was commissioned by James Oviatt, who had the fanciest, most expensive, most prestigious clothing store in Los Angeles. This is a men's East India cashmere overcoat. It's from the early 50s and it was custom made. Uh, it is in perfect condition and probably the softest cashmere you'll wow, ever feel. this is fantastic. You're wearing gloves, so I'm going to rub it <laughs> on you. your arm. And you can see Beautiful. clearly the Oviet's label. Was this made somewhere in Los Angeles? This was made above us. This was made on the third floor. Really? Yes. We're in La Cañada Flint Ridge, California, at the Lanterman House, built in 1915. So this is the ballroom. This is the ballroom. We have dance events, we do have musical events. We do period events from the 20s and the teens. Thank you so much, Melissa. Oh, you're so for welcome. For showing me this beautiful <laughs> house. We're here in downtown Burbank, California at Besame Cosmetics. The great thing Gabriella is doing is that she actually recreates the colors and the products of the past so that we can enjoy them today. You have a new product and it's a violet powder. Why would you put something purple on your face? The purple tint counteracts the yellow kind of sallowness that you get when you get dark circles under your eyes. So now all those companies that make an under eye concealer, none of them are purple. No. Maybe yes. they should be. But it does smell wow. like violet. Do you supply any of your cosmetics to the movie industry? A lot of the vintage theme productions come to us for ideas like or... Like on somebody's vanity, they say, how would a lady of the 1920s have set up her cosmetics? Yes. Do you actually know that? A lot of it is in my book because I did about five years of research on historical makeup and how we can make them now. This is a lipstick sampler. And they used to be very popular in the 40s. And this is little matchsticks in here. So are these colors of the 40s? Yes. And you can use each stick about three times. That's a great idea. We're here with my friend Carlos Grossi, who actually restored this great car. This car was built in 1940, which puts it in the pre-war category, naturally. And it's a Plymouth. And it's a Plymouth. And there's the engine. Wow. It's very, very clean. Yeah. It's, <laughs> This is the gas is up here? This is the radiator. Thank you. you. Cooling goes there. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. I don't know. Gas is way in the back. Okay, okay. What kind of person would be interested in buying a car like this? Well, basically, somebody that needed a lot of trunk space. Mm. You know, instead of, having, <laughs> instead of having a little pickup, <laughs> Pitching like, the mob. like we have now, you'd buy a small pickup. Well, back then, you could have something like this. Carlos, thank you so much for bringing your car today. We'll see you next time on Vintage America. Thanks for watching, folks. Let's go for a ride. Let's go back to the 40s. Okay. <laughs> Hers like a kitten. No seatbelts though, huh? No seatbelts in the 40s. <laughs>